Welcome! What is up, everyone? We finally, finally have a new episode of Q&A with Sean, which was previously called Questions for the Goof, if you remember. We changed the name. And I'm trying a new format here. I'm trying different things this year. Trying to change the series up. Trying to, you know, add to them. Trying to improve them. We're trying something a little different. I usually have myself on camera with the webcam and we're talking and this and that. And we're trying a little something different here. I actually asked the subscribers and viewers to submit um, a logo or a graphic for me for this series. And um, we're trying it a little different. We're going to see how this works. we got some awesome viewer art here from um, Mark Lasgini which is a, a fellow a viewer. And as you know, or if you don't know, if you're following me for the first time, first of all, I'd like to welcome everybody on stream that, that is live with me now. Welcome. Welcome viewers returning and new. This will be uploaded very shortly to my YouTube channel, Mary and J08, which will be archived. This is a little question thing. I like to really interact with the subscribers and viewers and keep in touch with them. And I love answering questions. And sometimes I get some really good ones. And I wait a few months and I build them up and I have an episode. Now, there's actually a lot more questions than this. But as you know, I now have a live podcast that I do. And I do have a little segment where the viewers write in and ask me questions. Sometimes they're live on the podcast and I answer them. And uh, so I basically split these up because I am working on episode three of my podcast. I hope to have a nice holiday podcast during the holidays this year too. So I am saving uh, the questions for that and this series. So I kind of break them up. So there was a lot more. Actually, this is the biggest turnout of questions. But then again, I haven't really did a Q&A or a podcast in a while. So the questions were building up. And I said, I think it's about time I start answering these. Because before you know it, these questions are going to start getting old. I'm going to lose them. And I'm going to need new questions. Alright? So I think we're going to get right into it. But again, I love interacting with you guys. I, I love being the kind of a viewer that, or a YouTuber that answers people. I love YouTube. You know, we've got no gimmicks on there. No gimmicks on stream. No gimmicks on YouTube or Twitch. I don't do any of that silliness. I don't take breaks every 10 minutes to, uh, you know, do stupid stuff for ads. We don't do any of that on here. We have fun. I like to give the, the viewer as much content as I can without bothering them and uh, I like to interact with everyone and I absolutely love this segment and I love answering questions so we're gonna get right into it fix my mic here got my headset on the first one is Tammy Gamer Girl best now just so you know I put these questions together but I really didn't read them or think about them I mean of course I had to look at them to write them down but I didn't, um, you know, memorize the the answers. I'm doing this right off the top of my head right now, just so you guys know. So I'll be thinking about these questions as I'm reading them. Uh, Tammy Gamer Girl says, "Best game shown at Gamescom." That's a great question. Jeez. Uh, well. I gotta tell you, I absolutely loved uh, the Advanced Warfare gameplay. I thought that was great. I, the multiplayer, I thought that was awesome. I thought that was really cool. Um, the Witcher 3 looked amazing. Uh, the footage from Assassin's Creed Unity looked absolutely amazing. I would probably say maybe The Witcher 3. I mean, that game is just keeps blowing my mind. It, it It's stunning. They showed a lot of great games. As a matter of fact, there's so many indie games that they showed off that look stunning. I mean, the, the you know, what was it? The Vanishing of uh, Ethan Carter. Uh, what was that other one? Jesus. There were so many great indie games. But AAA too. But I really, I really thought that they did a phenomenal job. That was a great, great conference. That was like on par with E3. I mean, I thought, I really thought Gamescom really came along. I mean, I was impressed with it this year. I, I really was. There was a lot that was shown that uh, that was interesting to me. Far Cry. 
Mike Roth, what games surprised you m most at Gamescom? Well, I don't know so much about surprise, but I was excited to see even games that we knew about new gameplay that, like, wasn't shown at E3, like, you know, the multi multiplayer of a lot of these games, like Advanced Warfare, it was interesting to see that. Um, some, like, well, most surprised was a lot of these indies that I didn't even know about, or that some were just announced, or some indie games that were announced, but we never seen really a lot of gameplay of them, and now that they've shown them at Gamescom, it was very indie-based. Some of those indie games are really jaw-dropping. I mean, it's amazing what they're doing with these games. I mean, these, these games are like blurred, blurring the lines between what we think of triple A and what we think of indie. I mean, they're just as amazing. So to see that progression with indie games is, is, was surprising to me. A Jelly Bean Bop 1330. What indies are you looking forward to? Like I said, The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. Uh, Velocity 2X is coming out very soon. A game called Chariot. A game called Chasm. Um, I'm looking forward to... What was that other game that was coming out that I was really looking forward to? An indie game. I was like, oh, wow. Um, I was just talking about it today. I was like, oh, my God. I can't wait for that. It's coming out on P Oh, Bro Force. Bro Force. That looks awesome. Drifter. Um... There's, there's, I don't know, but I have a list here. While it's not in front of me, it's on my Evernote of indie games coming out within this year and next year, and there's tons. I mean, I got triple A and indie, and the indies are like way more than the triple A. I mean, and I got a lot of triple A for the rest of this year and next year. And I gotta tell you, most of 90% of it is indie games, good indie games, like indie games that I'm really, really, you know, looking forward to. You know, I still have to cover Rogue Legacy on the channel. Road Not Taken, The Swapper. These are just phenomenal games that are just constantly keep pressing. And uh, they look they look really, really good. And uh, can't wait to check them out. So, yeah, Indies, definitely. Indies, 100% looking forward to. A lot of them. On Xbox One, on PS4. Uh, there's a few for Vita coming out. Alan the Man, what is your thoughts on Tomb Raider and Microsoft? Well, I don't know if I, I, yeah, I think I've talked about this on a pre-stream, on a pre-playthrough intro type product, um, as I like to call it. Before I play a big game, I, I have the sub art and I talk on stream. I don't remember what game it was for, but I believe I did talk about my thoughts. I, you might want to go back and check because I had a lot of thoughts. But basically, I'll sum it up. I'm into exclusives. But timed exclusives? I don't know. It's a funny thing. I think it should be exclusive or not. You know, timed exclusive, I think it's screwing the gamer over. Screwing the company over. You want it with, If you have a game that's going to eventually be on all platforms, you want it out on all platforms from the start. Because less and less people, you know, they're not going to want to play the game a year later on their on a different system. They're going to want to play it right out of the gate when it's new, when they know about it, when it's fresh, everybody's talking about it. And it's silly, even with this timed exclusive DLC. And it's amazing that a lot of these games that are coming out sometimes from day one on multiple platforms are only marketed towards one platform. Like, for instance, for like example, Destiny is a PS4, but it's also Xbox One, but you constantly are marketed to PS4 because there's exclusives, day one content, stuff that only Sony is getting, just like with Call of Duty with Microsoft. Microsoft getting content early, DLC map packs way earlier than PS4. PS4 catching up months later. I don't know. I There's nothing wrong with exclusives, but timed exclusives, I think it kind of messes with the customer. And it also confuses the customer. 
you know, it's it could be good, it could be bad. I've, I've apparently it's good for the company, like it's good for Microsoft or good for Sony. But I wonder what about the the consumer? I don't know. I don't think so. I think it hurts them. I really do, and a lot of this confusion now, like, it's exclusive for holiday 2015. Oh, well, we didn't say it was exclusive, we just said it was exclusive for holiday 2015, meaning it's a timed exclusive, or, you know, or they leave you guessing, like, well, is it exclusive or not? Just tell us. We're the ones that are going to be going out to the store and buying it. There was people in GameStop that didn't even know that Diablo 3 Ultimate Evil Edition was coming out on Xbox One. They said, we only saw it advertised for PS4. I said, well, that's marketing. You know, that's the way it is. So, yeah, it's confusing. But uh, it should just be on all platforms, especially, you know, Tomb Raider is known to be a Sony exclusive. Uh, not Sony exclusive, but it's just known to be a Sony franchise, is what I'm saying. Even though back in the day with the early versions of Tomb Raider, I used to play on the PC. We had various patches, too, for that, mods for that game that I'm not going to go into. Favorite types of movies. I like mob movies. They're my favorite. But I also like horror movies too. A top five movies of all time. I would probably say. The Exorcist. Uh, Goodfellas. Casino. I do like Gladiator. With Russell Crowe. That was one of my all time favorite. Salem's Lot. Yeah. Predator. Um, Zacky Z Rubble. What what are some of the things you like to collect other than gaming stuff? That's a good question. Because there is a lot. Uh, I do like to collect various books. I like to collect uh, figures. McFarlane figures. NECA figures. I'm big into action figures, Spawn. Uh, big into coins, um, rocks, minerals. And I am actually have a massive, massive collection, probably in the hundreds, of swords and knives. Tactical knives, daggers, swords, katanas. Massive. A lot of things. I'm a, I'm a big collector of, of things. A DVD, a music, music CDs. Carl Becker, are you excited for Hyrule Warriors? I am. I'm very excited for that game. It, it looks like a lot of fun. The more and more I see it. That was, I think, another one that I see in a Gamescom. That looks good. Will you be purchasing all the Amiibo characters? Yes, I will. I will be purchasing all of them. I'll be compulsive with them. Yep. I can't wait to collect them, actually. I think they said that there's going to be, like... There's going to be a lot of them, but I think there's going to be like 10 at launch. Probably, you know, the main characters like Mario, Yoshi. Any prediction... Oh, I'm sorry. Tom K. Any predictions when we will hear about Fallout 4 or Half-Life 3? Well, I don't think maybe this year, but definitely next year. Probably E3. I could almost guarantee it. Bethesda's up to something. We don't know if it's Fallout, if it's another Elder Scrolls, but you know, I'm I'm leaning more towards Fallout because I don't know. I just I just have a hunch. I could be wrong, but um, I, I definitely next year and probably definitely by E3 or maybe even before. Again, you know, it's a prediction. We hope, right? We hope that we hear about this year, but I don't think so. Mindy, how many PS2 games do you own? How many GameCube? <laughs> oh, jeez, I don't know. Um, PS2 I have in, in the hundreds, but GameCube I know I have even more. For some reason, I just went on GameCube. First of all, I was obsessed with the GameCube, and when I got the GameCube, I did nothing but buy freaking tons of games for it. I'm still getting games for it. I'm still on the hunt, and I've been collecting since, and I'm just a GameCube nut. Uh... Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of GameCube games. I have massive amounts. I could definitely keep up with the big boys on YouTube that are these big collectors. I I, I can match them. I, I got closets and closets and bins and bins. 
new series, and, and also from Mindy, new series planned for next year? Well, I'm not, I'm sure. Or maybe changing them and, and making them better. But I'm sure there'll be a few new ones. Definitely. Always trying to make, always trying to spice the channel up and, and change it for, you know, and make it better and, uh, try not to always keep it stale and having new reasons for people to come back to. So definitely. Fanny to Manny. Does game delays upset you or do you agree with them and why or why not? Yeah, I, you know what? It, it stinks, but it doesn't. Because I have a smile on my face at the same time because you know that they're improving the game. They're not rushing it. If they just wanted to make a dollar and, ru and make money and rush the game, they would release it. How many games have we seen like that? But if you think back of all the games that were delayed, like Bioshock Infinite, you know, uh, Watch Dogs, these games came out very good, in my opinion. And they were delayed. So, like, Battlefield has been delayed till next year. Well, every year you have a Battlefield. So, it's nice. You have more than enough to play this year. So, if they're going to take the time and release Battlefield early next year and make it better, I'm all for it. So, I agree with it. I think it's better for you. You're paying $60. You want a good game, a good product. You know, once you buy that game, once it's off the shelf, there's no turning back. You get what you get. And also, the uh, same person, do you think the Vita has a future? Uh, more AAA games, too many indies? Listen, there's these big podcasts that all they do is constantly talk about the Vita's this, the Vita that, we, the Vita's, you know, in trouble. They, they name their podcasts, all these. Th listen, listen, listen. I love my Vita. I play more than enough on it. I'm happy. Yeah, I wish it was marketed more. I wish that developers, you know, noticed it more. I wish it was noticed more at these game conferences. That's what Sony has to work on. If they really care about this system, they're going to have to put more effort into it. But I do love what's out on the Vita, and that is a powerful handheld, and it, and it is an amazing piece of hardware. I absolutely love it with the PS4, with cross-play, with cross-buy, with um, remote play. The Vita is a very, very powerful system, and I do hope it sticks around, and I do hope there's more games. Borderlands 2 was absolutely amazing on it. Killzone was absolutely amazing on it. There's some fantastic indies on it. I do like the cross buy, cross save, cross play features of it. Like I said, remote play. There's some amazing stuff on the Vita. The games that are out on it, the big AAA games, are fantastic. Little Big Planet, um, Golden Abyss. They're fantastic. And uh, Gravity Rush, Persona, Golden. Great system. I, 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 do, I do hope that it continues to be Support it, and it should be. Rockin', rockin' and boppin'. <laughs> these names. Rockin' and boppin' fly handles. I wish I was that creative to think of these names. Out of all the music in your collection, what artists do you have the most of? Top three. That's an awesome question. Uh, he must keep up on me. I would say probably top three. Um, Metallica, Ozzy, and Eminem. And probably if there was a fourth, or f I'll take, give you five. Marilyn Manson, and Korn. Yeah. Yep. Lick 'em, lick 'em, eighty one. <laughs> Are you planning on going to any regular giant season games? Yeah, actually, I am. It might be the Steelers or it might be the Broncos. I'm not sure. Yeah, mate. I'm not sure. But uh, if you've been following, you probably are. I just went to, um, well, it was actually a Jets home game, but it was the Jets and Giants. My buddy had a season pass for the Jets. He's a Jets fan, so I went to the Giants preseason. But yeah, I'll probably go to a, a Giants uh, game. I, I know I'm probably going to a couple Jets games just because he has the season pass. So I don't know which ones. 
Mark Lazzini, do you recommend me getting a PS Vita? Been thinking about one for a long time. What game should I get at first? Absolutely. Don't listen to these fucking big idiots out there. Um, I would say Uncharted. I would say Little Big Planet. Uh, Borderlands. Uh, shoof. Persona. Gravity Rush. Tons of indies. I mean, I'm not even going to say. Go into the PSN store and look at the indies. Um, you know. What else? There was another one I was going to tell you to get to. Assassin's Creed Liberations. There's a, there's a lot. You got to look. Definitely will keep you busy. Believe me. Um, and also from Mark, top five of this year so far. Hmm, good question, Mark. Good question. Dark Souls 2, South Park, The Stick of Truth. I'm not going to talk about remasters and reboots either. Um, Shovel Knight. Infamous Second Son, Watch Dogs. Tim Timpson, predictions to call... Huh? Oh, I see. I, I, I'm sorry. I wrote it down wrong. I know what he's saying. Tim Timpson, predictions for classic... Characters returning to Mortal Kombat X. A good question. Well, I'm hoping. We just recently found out about Raiden and Kano, right? I'm hoping. Kung Lao. I'm hoping Liu Kang. I'm hoping Havoc. That's right, Havoc, because I think he's an awesome, underrated character. I'm hoping. Katana, and I'm hoping Baraka. <laughs> no, seriously, I, I, I really do. I, I hope uh, maybe Stryker. Probably, uh, I would have to say Johnny Cage, I hope. They have Cassie Cage, right? The daughter of him and Sonya. I guess they got it on, and they got uh, Cassie Cage. Wow. She likes to blow bubblegum. Mortal Kombat is one of my favorite franchises, so it's definitely one of my top of next year. Guaranteed. That looks like it is the last of the questions, but there is more. Like I said, I am going to be saving them for my next podcast. So if you haven't if you didn't hear your question answered, do not worry. I'm throwing this away. Because I'm going to print out the new one. And that will be answered on my podcast. I believe, what is it? Episode 3 or 4? 3, right? Yeah. That is coming out soon. I'm going to actually start working on that podcast. It's going to be one of my best ones yet, I hope. I'm putting a lot of effort into it. And the, la the f last two did uh, decent. So I'm, I'm holding off and making the third one good. Hopefully make a holiday one in December. Get your questions and then probably... Um, do another Q&A episode because the, the questions have been rolling in. And a lot of times if you guys ask me questions that I don't get back to you, it's probably because I'm saving them for one of these episodes. Okay? Thank you everybody for joining me today. I hope that answered all your questions. Keep sending them in for the next episode. Keep sending them in for the podcast. And I will see you on the next Q&A with Sean. Take care everybody. Thank you for joining me.